Hello, my name is Kind Sound the Genius, and today we are going to be looking at basics of neural networks. We are going to also look at perceptron and multi layer perceptron. I'm going to try to be very simple, to be as clear as possible. Actually, you don't need any prerequisite knowledge to be able to follow in this lesson. The explanation will be very clear. And please just subscribe uh, to my channel, click on the subscribe button down there, you'll see a subscribe button just below, click on it, so that I can make better videos for you, uh, especially because my videos are based on requests. So if you request a video or you request a, a tutorial or a lesson, I'm going to make that video for you, but that will be uh, for my subscribers. So please click on the subscribe button to subscribe uh, at this point. Alright, so what are we going to cover today? In about 10 to 15 minutes, we are going to cover the following uh, topics. What is neural network? Neural network implementation. What are hidden layers? Networks for regression and classification. Network parameter optimization. The perceptron, the sigmoidal neuron. Multilayer perceptron. Training of multilayer perceptron. Error propagation and back propagation. Early L is stopping and we summarize what we've learned so far. Alright, so in about 10 to 15 minutes we are going to cover all of these topics. So let's start with the first one. What is a neural network? As you can see, a neural network is a computing system based on the biological uh, neural network that make up the human brain. So basically, a neural network is a subcomponent of an artificial intelligence system that tries to mimic how the human brain works. Neural networks are not based on any specific computer programs written for it, but can progressively learn and improve its performance over time. So the diagram you see here is an example of a neural network made up of, uh, made up of connections and made up of nodes. Alright, so what is neural network? Let's give uh, more explanation. So what you see here is a neural network made up of several connections called uh, neurons. So the, the nodes, the round nodes, they are called neurons and connection between them, the edges between them is called a synapse. Uh, in real biological terms, that is how the brain works. The brain is made up of neurons and synapse. So, by means of a synapse, a neuron can transmit signal or information to another neuron, and the receiving neuron can transmit signal to the next one. So, this process continues until an output signal is produced. So, as you can see in the, in the presentation, sorry, uh, let's get it straight. Okay, good. So, information moves actually from the first layer all the way to the last layer. So, how is a neural network implemented? The first step will be that there will be a network of nodes. This node will represent neurons. Now, we assign a number to each of the neurons. Okay? So, simply creating a graph made up of nodes and edges, and then assign a number to each of the neurons, this real number will represent the signal held by this neuron. Now the output of each neuron is calculated by a nonlinear function. This function will take the sum of the inputs to that neuron. So it means that a neuron will have a number of inputs to produce an output you must take note of all these inputs. Now, both the neuron and the synapse, remember the synapse means the connection line to this neuron. Both the neuron and the synapse usually have weights that continually adjust as the learning progresses. We'll talk about learning later. The weight controls the strength of the signal the neuron sends out across the synapse to the next neuron. Now, what are hidden layers? If you've learned about neural networks before, you must have heard about hidden layers. Hidden layers are layers between the input layer and the output layer. So, as you can see in the diagram, 
The orange colored layer or the orange colored site of neuron represents the hidden layer. The light green layer represents the input layer and the blue layer represents the output layer. Neurons are normally arranged in layers. Layers are not limited to two or three. There can be so many layers from one to as much as possible. And different layers may perform different kinds of transformation on its input. Signals move through different layers, including the hidden layers, all the way to the output. But one question I'll ask you is, is it possible that signals can move backwards from the output to the input? Well, we'll talk about this a little later when we discuss back propagation. Alright, so let's now look at, look at neurons for regression and classification. Remember that in case of regression and classification, we have a training data set. We are trying to understand this training data set so that when we receive a new input, we'll be able to classify it correctly. How this works is, you have an input and you have an output and you need to determine a function that relates the input to the output. This function is given, as you can see, this function relates the, the input x and the weight w. So this function is the function that holds the input and the output together. So somehow, if you apply it to a neural network, we can say that this function takes the input and also the weight and produces an output. The output takes into consideration all the inputs to that particular neuron. Now let's apply it to neural networks. Our goal is to extend this model. By the way, this model is called the linear basis function model. That is the formula you can see. Our goal is to extend this model by making the, the basis function phi of x depend on parameters and then allow these parameters to be adjusted along with the coefficient w during training. So the function phi of x is called the basis function. So the output depends on the weights and another function, another nonlinear function of x. So network parameter optimization is another important concept we are going to look at very briefly. When a network produces an output, that output might not be correct. It might be an erroneous output that is not exactly the same as the actual output. Now, you need to calculate the difference between the actual output and the correct uh, and the output produced by the neuron. So, in this case, this error is given by uh, the summation of the output produced by the neuron minus the actual one and squared. And this is, as you know, is a sum of squared error. Optimization has to do with finding the weight that will minimize this function. So we want to minimize this function to the barest minimum. And for us to be able to achieve minimizing this error to the minimum, we need to use a numerical procedure whereby an initial value of W is chosen and then we take successive steps to adjust the weight until a minimum value is reached. That is about network parameter optimization. You're optimizing the W parameter or the weight parameter. Now, what is a perceptron? Well, perceptron is also a neural network, but is the basic new, a unit of the neural network. A perceptron is the simplest model of a neuron that illustrates how a neural network works. This is an example of a perceptron. So think of a perceptron as a neural network with just one neuron. It has a set of inputs x1, x2 and x3 and a set of weights for the connection w1, w2 and w3. For this particular one, it produces an output. In the example, the perceptron has three inputs and one output. Now the importance of this is that 
the corresponding weights as well as the input determine the output. Sometimes we may need an output to be either 0 or 1. You may have heard of the binary classifier. So you need an output of either 0 or 1. That means that we need to pass this uh, input to a function that will produce either 0 or 1. And that brings us to sigmoidal neuron. The sigmoidal neuron takes the inputs and pass it into a function that can produce 0 or 1 based on certain threshold. This function that can give us a 0 or 1 or minus 1 and 1 or certain uh, limits is called a sigmoid function or a logistic call. A sigmoid function produces an output of 0 or, or 1 based on certain threshold that is reached. Another function that is used is called the tan, the hyperbolic tan function that produces minus 1 and 1 depending on the threshold that is reached. We also have the rectified linear unit that is also an improvement over the sigmoid function and the logistic scope. Now we have the multilayer perceptron, I, as the name implies, is a neural network made up of different layers. A multi-layer perceptron, there must be one or more hidden layer. Okay, so there must be a minimum of three layers since we have one input and one output and then we must have a hidden layer. That is about the multi-layer perceptron. Every other thing is the same with the, the perceptron we've discussed and every other concept of the neural network. Now, how do we train the multi-layer perceptron? What is training in the first place? Training occurs by continuous adjustment of the weight of the connections after each processing. Remember the output might be, might be wrong. So to train the network, we want to inform it the correct output and it makes some adjustments to get close to this output. So it continually checks the error between the output it produces and the actual output and continues to make necessary adjustment until it gets a minimum error. Backpropagation is a method to train the neural network. Backpropagation algorithm has two parts, the forward pass and the backward pass. In the forward pass, the output, the expected output corresponds to the given input I evaluated. And in backward pass, partial derivative of the cost function with respect to different parameters are propagated back into the network. The process continues until the error is at the lowest value. Early stopping, I'm not going to say much, but it tells us when are we going to stop the training of the network. At, at what point is the network optimal? Regularization is, uh, refers to the process of modifying the learning algorithm so as to prevent overfitting. So let's summarize what we've learned so far. We've learned that a set of input combined with weight plus a bias provides an output of the neural network. Neurons are connected by each other by means of a synapse. Neurons send signals to the next neuron and the neuron propagates signal from the input through hidden layers all the way to the output. This is how we come to the end of this class. I would like to thank you for viewing. If I'm too fast, please you can just rewind and uh, take a closer look at the explanation. Please subscribe so that I can make better videos for you, like this video or make a recommendation by leaving a comment, tell me what you observe or what improvements you want to see in the next video. I remain kind and the genius and I would like to thank you for viewing.